We are so glad that you're joining us tonight. We want to welcome you to Celebration Church. And of course, we have with us today a very, very special guest, none other than the man, the preaching thunder from down under, Pastor Brian Houston from Hillsong Church. And, and, you know, usually our Sunday night service is exactly like our Sunday morning service, same message and everything uh, else. Uh, we have to do that because of the crowds. But because Pastor Brian's here, we asked him to speak a different message tonight. So I'm saying that for you regular 530 attendees. Go online or, or get a free copy of uh, his message this morning on God's grace and favor. It was so, so good and uh, was really encouraging. But I believe tonight's even going to be better because God always saves the best for last. Right, Pastor Brian? We've learned from Pastor Brian that the best is yet to come. But he's really a man who needs no introduction. Of course, the senior pastor from Hillsong Church and uh, Hillsong is now 30 years old and he and his wife Bobby have been such great examples of integrity uh, to the body of Christ worldwide. I've probably learned more from Pastor Brian than any other person when it comes to uh, leadership, especially transgenerational leadership and, and uh, just passion and atmosphere and culture for God's house. So right now, Celebration Church and all those watching online in the, in the rain, I want you to stand to your feet and give the best welcome you can for Pastor Brian Houston. Thank you. Praise God. Jacksonville. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for the power of your word. Thank you, Lord, that nobody is here by chance. Thank you, Lord, you've got a purpose and a plan for every life here. Thank you, Father, we don't have to serve you in a mediocre way. Thank you, Lord, that we can be passionate about God, passionate about worshiping you, passionate about living our lives with purpose because of Jesus. Have your way in every life here, I pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and a faithful people said together, amen. amen, amen, amen. I love all the front half of the building where everyone's still on their feet praying, praise God. Awesome, you can be seated. I want to speak about <laughs> to sign. The latter rain is coming. I want to speak about living for the masters well done. Living your life with a sense of being on mission, on purpose. Something powerful about purpose. When people live their lives purposeful, it is almost guaranteed that something very significant is about to happen. Two types of people, the purposeful and the purposeless. Acts 13 verse 36 talks about David. It says, David served the purposes of God in his own generation, the scripture says, and then he fell asleep or and then he died. What a way to go out. David served the purposes of God in his own generation. It's always a great thing to ask whether or not you are serving God's purpose. You can be a believer, love God, love Jesus, but that's different than deciding to live your life for God in a purposeful way. That's an awesome eulogy. David served God's purpose. He served God's purposes. I would quite like to have that written over my life. When you decide to live your life purposefully, you decide to live an adventurous life. You step out on this journey called faith, and there's guaranteed some challenges along the way. But to live your life purposeful gives you the resolve and the wherewithal, and you find the energy, you find the time, you find the gift. There's something powerful about someone who is filled with purpose, filled with purpose. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. I love this verse. It says he has saved us and called us for the holy calling. Listen to it. Not according to our own good works. In other words, not according to 
anything really to do with us, but according to His good purpose and grace through Jesus Christ. In that one verse, it says He has saved you, He has called you, He has purposed you, and He has graced you. I believe He saves you for purpose. He calls you to purpose. He graces you for purpose. Everything is about God's purpose. Our time and our energy is about God's purposes. Our finance and resources are about God's purposes. Our gifts and our talents talents are about God's purposes. Our life and our health are about God's purposes. All of it is about the purpose of God. Do you know Matthew 25, one of the stories Jesus told, maybe my favorite story in terms of the parables or the stories that Jesus told. It's called the parable of the talents. Many of you would know the story, but it's about a master. And maybe we can turn to it. In fact, Matthew 25, verse 14, if you've got your Bible or your iPhone or whatever else it is that you use to look up the Word of God or Maybe even you just decide, well, I'm just going to look at the screens. Why bring my Bible if I can just check it up out there? I'm an old-fashioned believer. I like bringing my good old school Bible to church in Jesus' name. Have I got any friends in that? Have I got any friends in here at all? (laughs) Listen to it. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like. I love the way that Jesus begins his stories by talking about what the kingdom of heaven is like. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to Australia (laughs) who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. So in that sense, it was the same for everybody. And it goes on, if you read the verses and said, he who had received the five talents, verse 16, went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord came back Uh, The Lord of the servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came, brought five talents more, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said, well done. Living for the masters, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Well, it was the same for the second, but listen, the third one, the third servant lived an entirely different way. Whereas I believe the first two were purposeful, the third servant was purposeless. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. I knew, I knew you to be a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown, Gathering where you have not scattered seed. I was afraid and went, hid your talent on the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. The first two, purposeful. The third, purposeless. I love being around purposeful people. You see, purposeful people, they know that what God gives them is not just for themselves. They know it's not just for nothing. They know they're saved for purpose. They know they're called, that God gives them gifts and talents for purpose. They know that it's all about God's purpose, that He graces us and favors us for God-given purpose. There's something energizing around purposeful people. Well, do you know, you can see purposefulness in a person's perception of God. I wonder what your perception of God You see, in this story, the first two knew their master. The third servant had an entirely different view of the master. As a matter of fact, this is what the third servant said about the master. In verse 24, I just read it, listen to it. He said, I knew, I knew you to be a hard man. That's how he perceived the master to be. You're a hard man who reaps where you haven't sown, and you gather where you never did scatter seed. There's no doubt about it. I'm sure you possibly couldn't have talked him out of it because he knew, I knew you to be a hard man. Well, the first two, their experience of the master was anything but hard. 
He said to them, well done. He encouraged them. He called them good and faithful servants. He spoke of faithfulness and loyalty. He said, you've been faithful in a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. He gave them opportunity, chance to lead, chance to oversee others, and to look after many things. He spoke of abundance. He spoke to them about joy, enter into the joy of the Lord. He's speaking encouragement, opportunity, faithfulness, joy, abundance. The other, same master, exactly the same master. Well, I knew you to be a hard man. I wonder what you know God to be. So often people's background, maybe their religious background, sometimes people's own mindsets build perceptions of God. And if we're going to live our lives in a purposeful way, our perception of God is so important. What do you know God to be? The psalmist, Psalm 119 verse, I think 68, listen to it. It says, you are good. This is what David the psalmist says, you are good, speaking of the Lord, and you do good. Teach me your statutes. You see, the way he believed God was determined what he believed God does. And today still, the way people believe God is determines what they believe God does. Some people have a perception of God that doesn't give them that sense that they need to live their, their life in a purposeful way. 